Welcome to the tar pit. Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in on another beautiful Sunday. Um, today, we're going to do a couple of, well, one new thing here. Um, at the end, you're also going to hear outro music. Um, each week, that outro music will be different. Um, the music that you're going to hear is the instrumentals to an album that I have coming of spoken word. Um, and I actually create the music t- for the backdrop to set spoken word. So the instrumentals will actually play at the end of my podcast. Um, and it's greatly appreciated if you would, if you're following me on um, Facebook, um, if you would just leave me a comment of what you thought of the music that you hear on the podcast, that'd be greatly appreciated. Now, to get on to today's topic. So a couple of things happened over the weekend. Um, One of the things is going to be the main topic. One of them is going to be a touch on situation. So here's what I'm touching on. There is a message that is going around and I happen to have seen it on Facebook that talks about how activist Angela Davis, Angela Y. Davis, and you'll realize in a minute why I had to give her middle initial, was married to a white woman. Now, most people know that Angela Davis came out in like 97 as being a lesbian, but The whole point of the post had nothing to do with her being gay. The point of the post was they were talking about how she's a black activist. She's been fighting for black rights. And now all of a sudden she's married to a white woman. And this is the reason why this post is going all over the place. Because you're a black activist. What are you doing married to a white woman? Now, my issue with it has nothing to do with whether she was married to a white woman, black woman, a rainbow colored woman. Here is my sole issue with the post. There is a picture of Angela Davis the day she got married to this woman. However, the Angela Davis in the picture is Angela M. Davis. She's a professor from the University of Virginia. She is not the activist, Angela Davis. This is a completely different woman. Um, And not to mention the fact that it is my understanding that Professor Davis is biracial. Which, from my understanding, from the groups that I've been in and um, from things that I've been told from other people who are African American, biracial people are not a part of the struggle. Therefore, if she married somebody white, I do not see what... The issue was, if she's not technically considered black by your standard anyway. So, there's there's a whole another section to that that we could get into it and we could be here all day long. But the main reason why I even brought it up is because people were quick to jump down this woman's throat when they thought it was active as Angela Davis. Once some of us actually had to let people know that's the wrong person. It's not like people pull back and said, oh, you know, wrong person. Our bad. No, it turned from she sold out and married a white woman to, well, she's still a lesbian. What? That's not even what the post was about. The issue that the person who po- initially posted it had was the fact that a black activist was married to a white woman. That was the issue. Period. Point blank. Not that she was gay. Not that she got married in Virginia or Washington or wherever she was at. was the fact that she was married to a white woman. That was the whole issue. We cleared that up by letting you know that the woman that you're looking at and the woman that you're thinking about are two different people. They're both named Angela Davis. One is the activist. The other one is a professor from a whole different area. So we've cleared that up. That is not Angela Davis, the activist in the photo. Why are we still arguing? Why is everybody still mad? I mean, just post after post after post and not just on the post that I saw. I ended up being directed to somebody else's post who actually had it up as well. And each post, well, yes, she's not married to that white woman, but, and it's like, no, there is no, but 
We took care of the issue. The issue was black activist, white wife. Not a thing. It's like somebody was looking for a reason to tear her apart. And as black women, we get enough of that. We get ripped to shreds on a regular basis as it is. It seems like nothing we do is good enough for anybody. So when somebody who has been such a major part of us getting our rights, not just as black women, but as women across the board, period, as somebody who has been in that struggle, who has been fighting for African-American rights, who has been out there protesting and, and doing her thing so that things could get a little bit better for us. You would think that we want to protect that at all costs. Now, as far as Angela Davis as the person, I know some people who absolutely love her. I know some people who absolutely hate her. If you know her history, then you understand why. And that's fine. I know people who don't care for Martin Luther King. I know people who don't care for Malcolm X. Like, I know people who have issue with Rosa Parks. So I get it. I understand that. Just because you're an activist and just because you're out here fighting doesn't mean that there's not something in your background that makes other people go, mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure about that. So I understand if you have an issue with her because you have an issue with her politics or anything along those lines. If that is the case, then that's fine. We are supposed to be able to agree to disagree and act like adults who were raised indoors and not in the wilderness and be able to have conversations with each other about, well, this is what this situation is. Well, this is what I think. Well, this is what I think. Okay, well, we think two different things, but we agree to disagree and we move on so that we can be productive to bring our people to a better place. But instead, we wanted to go and start throwing messages left and right online about, well, since we can't get her for this, we'll get her for this. No, that should have been the end of the conversation because that was the start of the conversation. And we've already debunked that. It's not true. But instead, we felt the need to continuously rip apart this woman, every comment. After comment, after comment, somebody didn't like her hair. Somebody didn't like she was a lesbian. Somebody said, was she too light skinned anyway? Was, and it just became unbearable to even watch. And it just brings up the question, why, why, why do we do this? You will find one thing and I mean, go absolutely ballistic over that one thing and then we tell you well that one thing that you're mad about with that one person it's not true yeah but her face tank like it's always something we can't just let things go and be like oh my bad and move on it's there's always got to be something that you want to come back and eh, just poke and dig so it wasn't about whether you thought activist angela davis was married to a white woman You just had a problem with Angela Davis and this was just a way to come at her. Well, I'm going to get her for this. Okay, well, I can't get her for that. Well, I'll get her for this. And if somebody come out and said that wasn't actually her that came out, that was another Angela Davis. Because you know how many women are named Angela Davis? I mean, come on. Then it would have been, well, I don't like the way her hair is curly. Well, I don't like the fact that she look a little too light skinned. Well, I heard, and this is actually something I heard that somebody actually said. Well, I heard she was biracial anyway. What? Why can't we just be happy with the fact that this woman has done what she's done to help her people a hell of a a lot more than some of the people who were criticizing and move on. And like I said, if you don't like her because there's a couple of things in her past that are sketchy, then don't like her. But do we really have to, for lack of a better way to put it, crucify her on social media for what like we gotta stop doing that because move her out of the equation we do it to each other somebody's gonna have my ass nailed to a cross by the time this is over with because they didn't like something that I said 
Like we do this to each other constantly and it makes no sense. And we're never going to get to a place where we have unity. We're never going to get to a place where we have peace. If we continue to move like this, because we become suspect to each other and we start looking at each other crazy and now we don't trust each other and then it becomes just a huge problem. But we're never going to get to the point where we can have unity. It's never going to happen. Never going to happen. If we can't even simply have a conversation, agree to disagree and move on. When somebody came into the chat and said, you do realize that that is not activist Angela Davis. That should have been the end of it right there. Our bad. I mean, I, I even went back into the post with a picture of the actual woman with proof of the actual situation. Here's who it is. There were still people who, well, you know, she came out as a lesbian. I know I said that when I put the picture up that, yes, she did come out as a lesbian. No, she's not married to a white woman. Can we let it go? But we can. We just, we have to attack each other. We have to. It's been putting us so much to be so against each other. We don't know how to let it go. And we have to get to a place where we figure out how to let that go or we are never, never going to move forward. I always talk about supporting black businesses because there are small businesses out here struggling, but they are great businesses. We're never going to do that. I always talk about, you know what, coming together, uh, unifying, really being there for our communities, building them up instead of tearing them down. We're never going to do that. And. The reason we're never going to do that is because we refuse to work with the next person to do anything better. If I go outside and start cleaning the yard right now, somebody's going to be mad that my yard is clean and throw something in it. It's just ingrained in us. It is the nature of who we are. And we have got to get out of that. And there's going to be a lot of people who listen to me right now that absolutely disagree. And again, I'm an adult. You can disagree with me and it's perfectly fine and we can have a conversation about it. But at the end of the day, look around you. I'm not wrong because you see it everywhere. It's not like this is hidden. It's not like this is you know news. This is something that you see on a regular basis. And we have to put an end to it. Because we always talk about how there's no peace in this country. There's no peace in this world. There's no peace. And you're never going to get to the point of peace for any race. I don't care who you are. You are never going to get to the point of having peace until you let go of your silly ideas of what other people think and what other people do and what other races should do and what stereotypes and until you can let all of that go. Because what I do in my house as a black woman is my business and not yours. And what the next person does in their house or whatever it is that they do, whatever background they are, whatever ethnicity is their business. It's not mine. But when we step out of our homes and we're in the street, hey, neighbor, hey, how you doing? And we can go on about our business until we get to a point where everybody else's business is not my business, but I'm going to mind mine and my community. I'm going to make sure that the kids in my community are good. I'm going to there were some children playing in my front yard left some of their toys here and when they came back to come and get their stuff uh the one little girl was a little scared because she had accidentally left her things in my yard i did not move them when she came i made sure that nobody ran up on her because she left them in a driveway where she could have very well been hit by a car i looked out for her the same way i got packages left on my porch and somebody could have easily stolen them I was told several times that the post office will not deliver packages to the houses back here because there was a problem with people in the neighborhood stealing. And I have neighbors right here around me who they watched. I saw one of them looking at me when I stepped out to pick the package up. I've had people knock on my door. There's something out here for you. And then they go about their business and they have.